The state of Minnesota is blessed with an immense wealth of natural wonders. Thousands of pristine lakes, rivers, and streams, abundant forests and grasslands, and a wide array of wildlife, ranging from commonly seen deer to tiny river-dwelling plankton that are seldom viewed by casual observers. Minnesota also has a rich outdoor heritage with virtually unlimited access to boating, swimming, and fishing. But that heritage is now threatened by aquatic invasive species that jeopardize recreation and the delicate ecological order. It's time for us to take that threat seriously. More than two dozen aquatic invasive species have invaded Minnesota's waters. They are in more than 400 lakes and rivers out of the state's 11,000 lakes and 6,000 rivers and streams. Some of these are heavily used waters, such as Lake Mille Lacs, Lake Minnetonka, Gull Lake, and stretches of the St. Louis and Mississippi rivers. Our challenge is to keep these invading species from spreading further and to prevent new ones from getting a foothold in our state. Aquatic invasive species are the biggest threat today facing our lakes and rivers and our ability to use and enjoy them. We really need everybody, you included, to step up, take responsibility for our actions so that we can enjoy these resources today and future generations can as well. What do we mean by aquatic invasive species? They're plants and animals that live in the water and are not native to Minnesota. When these species are accidentally or intentionally transplanted into our waters, they can upset the ecological balance. No matter how they get here, the environmental consequences can be severe. For example, creatures like zebra and quagga mussels, round gobies, and spiny water fleas were transported in the late 1980s from the Black and Caspian Seas of Europe and Asia. They came in the ballast tanks of ocean-going ships and were unwittingly discharged from ballast water into the Great Lakes. From there, they spread to inland waters. New species of carp brought here from Asia are creating headaches both above and below the water's surface. And Eurasian water milfoil grows into mats on the water's surface that interfere with swimming and boating and diminish the visual appeal of our lakes. These seemingly unrelated species share a common and disturbing trait. In our ecosystem, they lack disease and predator controls, so these non-native species reproduce and spread at an amazing pace. The consequence is that they compete with native species for food and habitat. In turn, this can dramatically affect commercial, tourism, and recreational uses of Minnesota's well-known lakes and rivers. Aquatic invasive species like quagga mussels and zebra mussels and Asian carp and Eurasian milfoil, these things are incompatible with our way of life in Minnesota. Recreation in Minnesota is a $4 billion a year industry, second only to agriculture. Fishing alone generates over $2 billion a year. So there's a real economic incentive to stopping the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. But more than that even, our way of life and who we are as Minnesotans would be lost if these things get into our lakes and streams. Foremost among the invertebrate invaders are zebra mussels, small striped mollusks about the size of your thumbnail that multiply at incredible rates. Zebra mussels encrust rocks, docks, boats, and water supply intakes with a sharp coating of shells. Meanwhile, their larger but lesser known relatives, quagga mussels, colonize deeper water. Zebra mussels are found in portions of the Mississippi and St. Croix rivers and in select popular fishing lakes like Mille Lacs, Gull, Minnetonka, and other waters. Zebra mussels and quagga mussels both present a really serious threat to our inland lakes in Minnesota. They feed on plankton, the microscopic plants that are in our lake, and this is the base of the food chain. And if the zebra or quagga mussels build up high enough densities in the lake, they can strain out so much of this plankton population, the base of the food chain, that there may not be the food available for other animals in the lake, such as the game fish, and this could have serious long-term impacts on our lakes here in Minnesota. When invasive species first arrive, their population may rapidly expand in the new environment and then eventually settle into a new ecological balance which can be drastically changed. With zebra and especially quagga mussels, the extent of the damage is difficult to predict because quagga mussels infest deeper waters than zebra mussels. Together, they have the potential to wreak havoc throughout the ecological system. We focus a lot of our work on some of the, the busiest recreational and fishery lakes in the area. We've seen firsthand how rapidly these zebra mussels spread. 
on Gull in 2010, we've witnessed zero zebra mussels on the equipment that our company removed. In the fall of 2011, one year later, nearly every single job was covered in zebra mussels. So how are zebra and quagga mussels spread to new locations? These and other aquatic invasive species hitchhike in several ways, by attaching to things that have been in the water, by clinging to aquatic plants, and by being carried with the water itself. People can unintentionally move these invaders on trailered boats, personal watercraft, duck boats, kayaks, and canoes. They can be carried inside bait buckets, live wells, bait wells, and the ballast tanks of wakeboard boats. They can also be moved along with boat trailers, carpeted trailer bunks, anchor and ski ropes, docks, boat lifts, scuba gear, and even the soles of waders. All it takes is one careless person to transport the problem and change another lake or river forever. Within a few years, an entire watershed can be infested. Sharp shells are attached to rocks and wash up on beaches, discouraging swimming. A loss of tourism dollars can follow. Zebra mussels filter green algae from the water, leaving less desirable blue-green algae behind. And the natural toxins and mats of blue-green algae washing ashore can create health hazards for children and family pets. Zebra mussels and quagga mussels can have a lot of different impacts in the lakes on the ecology and recreational use. And these impacts may be long-term and unable to be changed once these populations become established in the lake. Minnesota has also experienced the unwelcome arrival of faucet snails and New Zealand mud snails in a limited number of waters. These snails can attach to equipment used in the water too. They compete with native snails and faucet snails can host parasites that kill waterfowl. Another invading invertebrate is the spiny water flea, a large zooplankton which anglers sometimes find clinging to their lines when fishing Rainy Lake or Lake of the Woods. Spiny water fleas grow up to 3 eighths of an inch in length and because of their sharp spines, most small fish avoid eating them. Spiny water fleas compete with native zooplankton and eat smaller zooplankton, reducing the amount of food available for newly hatched fish. When the downriggers and anchor lines that this species clings to are moved, so is this invader. The rusty crayfish is another invertebrate invader that is native to southeastern United States. It was likely brought to Minnesota waters such as Leech Lake by anglers who carried them as live bait Rusty crayfish are a larger, more ferocious species that outcompetes native crayfish populations for food and territory. It also has the nasty habit of shredding the rooted aquatic plants that are important habitat for fish and other water creatures. Less widespread, but grabbing lots of headlines, are carp from Asia, specifically the bighead and silver carp species, which pose a significant threat to Minnesota waters. Individual bighead carp and DNA from silver carp have been found in the St. Croix River and in the Twin Cities portion of the Mississippi River, indicating some fish are here. The primary threat that Asian carp, both bighead and silver carp, pose is the fact that they can short circuit the food chain. They're very efficient filter feeders. They take the phytoplankton and the zooplankton that all of our native fishes, from shiners to bluegills to walleyes, the paddlefish need for their basic survival. And they're just extremely good at this, and that way they can really outcompete our native species. Originally stocked in aquaculture ponds in the south to control algae, floods allowed them to escape into the Mississippi River drainage and move upstream. They are prolific breeders, capable of virtually taking over entire stretches of river, altering the local fish community dramatically. While bighead carp eat more and grow larger, it's the high-flying silver carp that offer vivid evidence of the invasion. Approaching boats can scare entire schools of silver carp into leaping out of the water, causing serious injuries when they hit boaters and personal watercraft users. Some boaters are forced to wear protective helmets, hide behind windshields, or avoid boating on infested rivers. Round gobies are another unwelcome guest in America, courtesy of European ballast water discharged into the Great Lakes. They have no swim bladder and live their entire life cycles within a few inches of the bottom. In some areas of the Great Lakes, they have become the preferred forage of smallmouth bass. But due to their sheer numbers, there are more than enough gobies present to withstand bass predation. Young gobies devour a combination of insects, fish eggs, and whatever they can get. Because they have ferocious appetites, gobies can quickly gobble up the eggs in the unguarded nests of bass or panfish. 
European Ruff are another European transplant that has moved into the St. Louis estuary at Duluth. Like gobies, they are unchecked predators that compete with native species like yellow perch. Minnesota's waters also have been invaded by common carp, sea lamprey, and white perch, all of which stress native species. Eurasian water milfoil is one of the plant invaders which has become a nuisance in many Minnesota waters. The introduction of Eurasian milfoil to America can be traced to the aquarium trade, where plants were imported for use in fish tanks, but ended up in local waters. Eurasian milfoil is an aggressive, rooted plant that quickly grows to the surface. It spreads out across the water surface, forming an umbrella-like canopy that blocks sunlight and chokes out the native plants below. Milfoil forms dense, unsightly cover through which it's difficult to swim or navigate. Small pieces of milfoil carried on boats and recreational gear can seed a new invasion if they are carried to other lakes. Numerous attempts have been made to eradicate Eurasian milfoil and other invasive aquatic plants from lakes, mostly by chemical treatments or pulling, but these efforts have not succeeded in completely eliminating the plants. The reality that eradication is not usually possible means preventing it from spreading is a top priority. I grew up out here on Minnetonka since the early 70s. 1987, milfoil was found on the lake and grows in about 5 to 15 feet of water. Uh, in that 5 or 15 feet of water is typically matted. We've got a 14,000 acre lake here, and of, of the lake, about 6,000 acres of it is that 5 to 15 feet of water depth. Before we had MILFO, before the 1987, the lake was completely usable as far as an acreage standpoint. You didn't notice that it was one of the cleaner lakes that was out there. Since then, it's everywhere, 5 to 15 feet of water depth. That's areas where we swim fish, water skis, race sailboats, all those different things, and with it being matted there, that's completely impacted or changed the way we've used the lake or the way I grew up knowing the lake. We can't use those areas for that type of stuff. Also present in Minnesota are unwanted populations of curly leaf pondweed, flowering rush, and purple loose strife. Aquatic invasive species threaten Minnesota's rich lake and river heritage and history because they threaten the overall health of these waters. They greatly uh, impact and at times reduce, maybe even eliminate our opportunities to use them in any number of ways. Now is really the time to act to protect Minnesota's rich lake and river history and heritage because the science has shown us, citizens have shown us that all across the state, aquatic invasive species are having devastating impacts on our lakes, rivers, and streams. Minnesota law requires everyone to clean off all plant material and any prohibited invasive species from their watercraft. This applies to boats, kayaks, canoes, personal watercraft, duck boats, all watercraft, no matter what their uses are. To combat the spread of invasive species, there is a three-step, easy-to-remember process called Clean, Drain, Dry. It only takes a few minutes for boaters and outdoor enthusiasts to apply these simple yet effective steps every time they leave a boat access or body of water. Minnesota has strict laws to prevent boaters and anyone working or recreating on the state's waters from moving aquatic invasive species to other lakes and rivers. It only takes simple steps to follow the laws. Many boaters have become accustomed to checking their trailers and watercraft for aquatic plant fragments in an effort to stop the spread of Eurasian milfoil. This procedure only takes minutes and it can prevent a permanent infestation on another lake. This is not an optional activity in Minnesota. It's the law and DNR conservation officers take any violations seriously. Because the consequences of failing to clean are potentially severe and long-lasting, violators risk getting citations for not following the regulations. Now, in addition to looking for aquatic plants, it is also necessary to visually inspect and to feel the surface of boats and equipment for other aquatic invasive species, such as tiny zebra mussels. It's best to have a routine for your inspection and cleaning. For example, start at the winch and work your way around the boat and trailer until you're back at the winch on the other side. That way, you won't miss anything. As you move around the boat, 
check the anchor and anchor lines for plants, snails, mussels, and spiny water fleas. Spiny water fleas often collect on anchor lines, fishy lines, and downriggers. On the trailer, check the rollers and trailer bunks and remove any plants. Check the trailer fenders and the entire length of the axle for any plants that may be clinging to them. Remove any plants that are snagged on the boat's lower unit and propeller, and lower the motor so it drains completely. Look closely at the lower unit and motor parts that are below the waterline for zebra mussels, snails, spiny water fleas, and other aquatic animals. Also inspect the hull and other boat equipment where these plants and animals could attach. A flashlight might be helpful to see under the boat and in shadows during this inspection. Run your hand over the boat hull below the waterline and over the transom to detect if there are any tiny zebra mussels attached. Waterfowl hunting and angling presents unique risks for accidentally spreading aquatic invasive species. If you take part in these activities, there are extra steps to get rid of aquatic hitchhikers. Waterfowl hunters need to clean all plants, animals, and mud off their boats, trailers, waders, push poles, decoy lines, and decoys when they leave the water. The mud should be removed because aquatic invaders can be hiding in it. Anglers should make sure their fishing lines and fishing lures are free of aquatic plants and animals. If you use a personal watercraft, you should steer clear of aquatic plants when you head into the land at the water access. When you've pulled your personal watercraft out of the water, clear all plants from the water intake, impeller, and trailer. Then run your engine for 5 to 10 seconds to blow out any remaining water and to eject any plants hidden in the water lines. To comply with state law, you must drain all water from your watercraft and any container or equipment that could hold water carrying invasive plants or animals. This means you must remove the drain plug to drain water from your bilge and then leave the plug out while transporting. You also have to drain your live well, bait bucket, any container, and recreational equipment. This includes the lower units of outboard motors and the water lines of personal watercraft. If you're a wakeboard boat user, you need to make sure you aren't carrying aquatic invaders in your ballast tanks. If you can't completely drain the ballast tanks, you should flush and decontaminate them by filling them with hot water through the water intake or through hole fittings. Some aquatic invasive species, like the larval phase of zebra mussels and spiny water fleas, are so small that they're not easily seen in the water. By draining water before you leave the lake or river access area, you avoid transporting these invasive species along with the water. Anglers using live bait must take additional precautions as well. They must drain out the water in their bait buckets on shore and replace it with clean water if they want to save bait for future use. This can be done by bringing extra water and leaving it in your vehicle. Make sure your water stays cool so the life of your bait is maintained. Discarded bait should never be dumped into a lake or river, only in the trash. If you're a waterfowl hunter, you need to remember to drain your decoys as well as your boat. Because the law makes it illegal for you to transport aquatic invasive species, the DNR recommends some additional steps to help remove or kill aquatic invasive species that may be attached to your boats and equipment after cleaning and draining. Watercraft users are advised to do at least one or more of these steps to remove or kill aquatic invasive species that might be attached to boats or equipment. Option one is to use hot water to rinse all areas of your boat, trailer, live well, and gear that have been in the water. This will kill invasive species such as zebra mussels. Option two is to use a high pressure water spray on your boat and gear to remove invasive species. If effective cleaning equipment is not available, option three is to let your boat, gear, and equipment dry for at least five days. Allow any equipment that may have absorbed or collected water to air dry for at least five days as well. As owner of a popular guide service here in central Minnesota, our fishing guides are on the water daily, hopping to a number of different lakes throughout the season, and aquatic invasive species have become a major problem. But do your part, and it's simple. Clean, drain, and dry to help prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species. The state of Minnesota and its residents are making a significant commitment to prevent the spread of invasive species by ramping up efforts to inspect and decontaminate boats and water accesses around the state where invasive species are present. In addition to visual inspection by trained personnel, 
These stations provide the ability to pressure wash your watercraft and trailer with water heated to 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which is hot enough to kill zebra mussels. In addition, Minnesota has started conducting roadside checks at random times and locations to ensure that the users of our lakes and rivers are following the regulations. Your cooperation at these roadside checks is critical to stopping the spread of invasive species. If you see any violations of aquatic species laws, report it to your local DNR office or conservation officer. Following these clean, drain and dry procedures will prevent you from giving any invading aquatic species a ride to another Minnesota river or lake. The Minnesota DNR is helping people learn how to stop the spread of aquatic invaders, but state, county, local and tribal law enforcement agencies are working to educate people about their legal obligations and to enforce the law as well. Under state law, lake service providers in Minnesota must supply approved training for all of their personnel who install and remove docks and lifts. By training employees in what to look for, they can detect aquatic invasive species early to help prevent their spread. Lake associations and cabin owners have also been leaders in preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species by setting up and running local inspection efforts. Major fishing tournament organizations are participating too by implementing requirements to prevent the spread of aquatic invaders. They're spreading the word to their participants and audiences. Local fishing events and skiing and boating competitions are encouraged to take similar proactive measures. Ongoing education of all water uses is the best way to get participation. Laws and enforcement alone won't get the job done. We need everyone who uses our valuable water resources to make it his or her personal goal to protect these unique resources. Minnesota is blessed uh, with a lot of lakes, almost unique in this country. Um, we all enjoy them. We have unfettered access to our lakes, but the spread of aquatic and VC species threatens that. Our biggest challenge in, in winning the fight against the spread of aquatic and VC species in Minnesota is to engage and activate, uh, organize all segments of the population. No one organization, no one agency can do it, no laws can do it. Uh, it takes all the stakeholders to be involved. It has economic, recreational, the fishing experience, and up north experience impact. It affects everyone, and we need to do something. Every citizen needs to participate in preventing the spread. Aquatic invasive species pose a very real threat to the ecosystems of Minnesota's lakes and streams. Once invasive species arrive in new areas, there are no easy ways to remove them. Native species and habitats and the people who rely on them are forced to adjust. This can mean the loss of part of our outdoor heritage and can limit our use of Minnesota's water resources. The best way to prevent the spread of aquatic invasive species is to take simple but effective steps of clean, drain and dry every time you enjoy our state's waters. With the abundance of our water resources and the diversity of groups who use them, no single government agency or organization can do the work alone. It's up to each and every person who enjoys the Minnesota outdoors to do his or her part to prevent the spread of aquatic species. We're all in the same boat together, and together we can protect the lakes and rivers and the water activities that we treasure. If you have any questions about invasive species or how to fight the spread of them, please contact your local Minnesota DNR office or go to mndnr.gov for information and office locations.